it's a difficult city, let's face it. Traffic is awful, it's so full of people and it's expensive and dirty and, and we all know this tube doesn't work and the trains are crap and it's, it's just a, there's all that. But at the same time it's endlessly fascinating. I think London is completely amazing at the moment. I'm also sure that the depth and volume of London arts life and, and more specifically musical life is unlike any other place on the earth. The fact that there are so many orchestras competing and they, they, there's so much going on is sometimes trouble, but, but mostly it's inspiring because it really forces us to think of new solutions and think of something that really has an identity. Autumn 2005, we had a tour. I think it was 17 concerts in 19 days. And we began to talk about where we were going. We began to talk about who the next principal conductor might be. And we ended up in Milan in a hotel room and we had a meeting. The point of the meeting was to get a shortlist drawn up for our next principal conductor. As the meeting went on, the shortlist got smaller and smaller and smaller until by the end, I'm, I'm afraid there was just one name on it. Uh, we really didn't have a plan B at that point. Um, but it was Esapekka Salonen. What I'm really hoping to be able to do, apart from the purely musical things, i.e. doing fascinating things with the Philharmonia, uh, but I'm really hoping to be able to connect with the arts life and kind of tap into the, the amazing variety and volume of the arts in London. And this is something that the kind of arts scene that exists in London. That's something I've been missing, actually. There is a palpable sense of expectation with Esa Pekka. There's an expectation from within the players that we are about to take part in something that could be extraordinary. And that really is the most important thing from inside the orchestra. And that was the thing that we felt Esa Pekka could bring to us. Well, if I would have to somehow describe myself as a, a musician in one word. I think uh, curious would be the word. Endlessly fascinated by music. Why is this piece a masterpiece and why is that piece not a masterpiece? Why has a melody like Green Sleeves survived for hundreds and hundreds of years and several hundreds and thousands of melodies disappeared? What is it? Uh, and it's, I think it's that journey I'm on still. Back in April 2005, uh, the Philharmonia did its first live webcast with you. We did also Sprach Zarathustra. And um, something when we began talking um, about this appointment, that was something that came up fairly early on, was how that we can start with a concert and we can send that out in, in all the different ways that are becoming available to us. I mean, do you, do you believe that that is a necessary part of our future? And do you believe that the basic core experience of coming to a concert and coming to a concert can be preserved despite all these challenges ahead? First of all, to have a strong presence on the internet, whether we like it or not, it, it is a necessity. If we want to exist uh, uh, in the minds of, of people today, we have to be there. What I found especially attractive about the Philharmonia's approach is that that almost everything the orchestra does has its own counterpart in, on the web. And, and some of the numbers I've seen uh, in terms of the number of hits per day or, or whatever, the uh, sound exchange numbers, they are staggering. And, and this tells you that classical music is, is well and alive and just has to be accessible out there uh, like everything else is and we'll, we'll be fine. I really believe in this kind of idea that we develop a concept and, um, and try to cross-pollinate also, uh, try to involve more than one discipline. Uh, and we create a package that really has depth. Um, and then it makes perfect sense to tour, to take this package to other places because the more you do it, the better it goes, of course, and, and also um, that really is the way of the future, I believe, that, that 
they, they will be these sort of thematically cohesive blocks and, and they will, will be developed and taken to places. That's the way to go. It just takes some innovation at certain type of uh, openness and uh, lack of prejudice and oh, we're fine. One of the many amazing things about the Philharmonia, of course, is the flexibility. The almost uncanny ability to identify with whatever music they're playing. Historically informed Beethoven sound. They can go from that to the lush sounds of Messiaen, just like that. And there are not many orchestras that can do that. They seem to be a sort of intuitive, very... Um, natural understanding between myself and the players. The kind of change of gear between the dress rehearsal and the concert, this is amazing, because the Philharmonia really is a sort of concert animal. That is the whole point of playing music for people, that you do absolutely 120% every time you do anything. Otherwise it makes no sense. Why, why are we doing it otherwise? Um, and that's also what makes a live performance worthwhile, because this is something you you will not get from a recording. Do you remember how you felt during that first concert with the Philharmonia? Already, of course, you know, impressed the, with the way they played in the dress rehearsal and, I, you know, the sheer quality of their playing and the sound they made and, and all that. But then when the concert started and they started putting out, and I was uh, beside myself, I thought, yeah, this is it. This is fun. <laughs>